call this meeting to order for the City Council meeting of August 15th, 2017. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Boyson? Here. Councilmember Cordero? Here. Councilmember Motes? Here. Councilmember Waterfield? Here. Madam Mayor Patino? Here. First item on the agenda is the presentation of the Spirit of Santa Maria Award, and I'll be making the presentation along with Recreation and Parks Director, Mr. Posada. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, I have great pleasure in being uh, allowed to present this item to you. Way back in 1998, the City of Santa Maria was awarded the All-America City Award. And in order for a community to be uh, considered uh, an All-America City, the National Civic League sets criteria. Some of those criteria include citizen participation, community leadership, volunteerism, philanthropy, intergroup relations, civic education, uh, cooperation and consensus building, community uh, vision building, and regional cooperation. These are some of the things that a city must show in order to become an All-America City. When the city was awarded this uh, recognition, we came back as part of the committee and we asked the council, gee, we really want to keep this spirit moving forward. So along with a, a marketing plan that was developed back in, in 98, we also talked about coming up with an award. Uh, we've asked our All-America City Committee, which was part of the recommendations to, to look at how to uh, recognize groups in the community and individuals in the community who have demonstrated the, the principles of the All-America City Award. Tonight, I have great pleasure in uh, coming to you with this year's nomination. Uh, oh, I should say this year's, this year's awardees, which is um, Elks Lodge 1538 and the Elks Recreation Foundation, Inc. Uh, the Recreation and Parks Commission uh, took on the uh, chore of soliciting the applications for and nominations for the award, and then also went through a review, a review process and selecting the, the nominees. Some of the criteria for the nominees is they must have accomplished significant civic undertaking outside of the regular course of work for the betterment of the city of Santa Maria. All significant city uh, civic undertakings must be positive, beneficial, and for the betterment of the city of Santa Maria and its residents. Individual nominees must be residents of the city of Santa Maria and group nominees must work uh, or provide service within the city limits. So tonight we have a, a great group of individuals who for years have provided service to the community. I don't think there's another group in the community that, that can um, stand up to their record. So I would like at this time, Mayor, to turn it over to you to present uh, this year's uh, Spirit of Santa Maria Award. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Posada. So I will have um, Tony Dart from the Elks Lodge and Scott Parsons from Elks uh, Recreation. And we have two Parks Commissioners here, uh, Greg Burnett and uh, Rebecca Carey. Come on up. <laughs> Councilwomen, men and women, from the Elks Lodge, we do and we thank you for this. More importantly, we will uh, thank you that you will support us in the Elks Lodge of Santa Maria with all 3,043 members and 30 more coming at the end of the month and looking for more members will always be here to support the city of Santa Maria. Thank you. Yeah. 
Let's get him in the picture. <laughs> they only get paid seventy five dollars a month. So. Council members, mayor, city and parks and rec, and fellow people, thank you very much for this amazing honor that you've given us. We have worked so hard for many, many years. This year, as all of you know, was the most hardest. It was, there was a lot, there was countless hours that a lot of us put in, and a lot of the city council were out there this year helping us out. It was, we all know it was a big, we've got the, the chamber involved this year, the city got involved, uh, because not only were we doing our annual Elks Rodeo for our 74th year, but us in Vegas with the PRCA, seeing our name, City of Santa Maria up on the board of having the PRCA cha Wrangler champion, I'm sorry, cha yes. champion yes. challenge, yes, coming into town, we were, we are one of five stops on the tour, and to see our name up there in front of 800 or so people in the, uh, in the conference room was amazing. And then not only that, CBS Sports came into town, and so we were first time we've ever been broadcast nationally. And so that was huge for our city and our local rodeo here in town. So I can't thank everybody enough you know, for our volunteers, over 400 volunteers. We had businesses that supported us and helped us out out there. So it's a big thank you to everyone. I'd also like to dedicate this award tonight to our president, Phil Harwick. He's battling the time of his life right now. And he, that's why he couldn't make it tonight, but I dedicate this award for him. He's been with us, uh, part of the organization on the, the board for four years now, and he's worked really, really, I mean, he, I can't tell you how hard he's worked to bring this rodeo from where it was back in 2013 to where it is today. We are at the top of the top. But next year, we got a beat. We got our 75th anniversary next year. So I'd like to welcome everyone out there. Thank you very much. I, I would certainly like to say thank you to all the Elks and what what the Elks have done over the years. I mean, Elks Field was named for the Elks because with Butch Seamus and Clarence being out there. And I think that the focus of always being there for the youth of this community is enormous. I, do, I don't know how many thousands of millions of do dollars, there's Tina Tanasha back there, that uh, has been generated in this community. But we thank you so much. Ms. Waterfield, did you want to say something? Oh. oh, and just to remind you that we're all Elks. Here, so. Whole city council that are all elf members. <laughs> Mr. Cordero. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, you know, I, I, uh, I think everybody knows I'm an officer over at the Elks. Uh, I didn't really understand uh, before becoming an officer there all that goes into this. And these people, before you saw the rodeo in June, the people in the Elks Rec are already working on the rodeo for next year. That's how much they work on it. That's how hard it is. That's how much effort they put forth. It, it's not a it's not a four day event. Mm -mm. It's a year long event, and it never stops. And uh, things are coming up and changing and moving so fast that uh, I, I, I kudos to all those people that that are able to swing that and make it happen. It costs a tremendous amount of money to put the rodeo on, but. It's, it's worth it for the community because, you know, we don't count the dollars. I don't, I don't know how you would count the dollars. But people that come here to the rodeo, they buy gas and food and items and they eat at restaurants and uh, so on and so forth. It, it's, a, it's a huge tax boost. I suppose if we had Mr. Hayden crank up the numbers, he could probably do it. But uh, uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous organization to be a part of. Uh, once you're a part of it and, and in the inner workings, you just, uh, it, it's, it's, it's just addictive to do. So I, I thank and I'm proud to be a member with all of you folks. 
the mini the Minetti mini rodeo that it's put on Thursday morning is is great. You you can just feel all the mm -hmm. electricity in the air with the, with the small ch children coming and they're bussed in from all the schools. So it's it's exciting. We all look forward to it. And we'll look forward to working with you again next year. Thank you, Tina. You know, before I go on to um, a consent agenda, I, I would like to read a statement that uh, I think is very important. And it uh, certainly is with great sadness and deep concern that we here in Santa Maria view the violence, conflict, and the tragedy of recent days in Charlottesville. That type of social intolerance, hatred, and extremism is not condoned. There's no place for it any place, anywhere, anytime. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all of those who are suffering. So with both words and actions, we must treat one another with great kindness, with compassion, and understanding. A community develops and grows when individual members, how de uh, we are so dependent on each of us for one another, and when we reach out to those around us. Your community is what you make of it. Each of us has an important role in helping others. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the public comment period. Madam Clerk, could you please read the criteria for public comment portion of this agenda? This time is reserved to accept comments from the public on consent agenda items, closed session items, or matters not otherwise scheduled on this agenda. Unless otherwise directed by the mayor, speakers will have three minutes to comment. Direction to staff may be given. However, state law does not allow action to be taken by the city council on matters not on the printed agenda this evening. Once the public comment period commences, no other speakers will be allowed to submit a request to speak form and madam mayor we have two requests to speak thank you and we have ed zeust followed by ernest armenta good evening mr zeust good evening mayor and council just wanted to comment about the realignment of bradley road and what it looks like for route seven now so far with all the sidewalks in place and everything almost set to go haven't seen any pullouts yet for the bus and I wonder if that was just an oversight or we're still in, uh, in the process of petitioning Caltrans because I understand there's some involvement with them, much like there was with the Santa Maria Commons by Coles. We want to, without a pullout, and we tried, tried positioning a bus drop, bus stop right off on the side of the road, and Caltrans and CHP were not too happy with that. So we very, that didn't last very long. But we do need a pull out in that location as well. We have to take a petition, Caltrans, to do that again also, to place something out there by Lowe's and, and Costco. We just, there's nothing apparent there now. It's all just solid sidewalk. Thank you. And um, I've got your phone number here on your slip, and we'll have someone contact you. Thank you very much for bringing that to our attention. Mr. Ernest Armenta? too quiet in here. Um, Ernest Stephen Armenta, City of Santa Maria. At, at the last, last city council meeting, I wasn't present, but I watched the video. Mrs. Patino asked Alex Posada and Mrs. Harvey why we issue permit business license f to serve uh, food and other items at the parks. And then after, and Ms. Patino asked, well, why don't they get a health permit first? And, it, 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 and uh, the issue came up and they asked Mr. Mr. Posada, and Mr. Posada really didn't have an answer. Mrs. Harvey tried her best to come and give an answer. But our elected city clerk is the one, and, and the deputy city clerk sitting there, they're responsible for business license. That's what we, the voters, voted on. We made it very clear to this council and to management that the city, city elected city clerk is independent, meaning Mike Cadero, Dr. Motes, Councilman Edda Waterford, and Mr. Boyce and Mrs. Patino, Mr. Hayden, Mr. Trujillo, individually and together as a unit, have no authority over the city clerk. She's independent. She's answerable only to us. And during that meeting, when Mrs. Harvey and, and when Mrs. Patino asked Mrs. Harvey about business license, the city clerk wasn't nowhere to be present. In fact, this elected city clerk and elected city treasurer never come to the meetings. 
to the uh, to actually right now you know that the staff at the city clerk referred to the elected city clerk as a ceremonial position you know how that offensive that is to us voters so i ask very clearly if they can't if they don't have the time to do their job and they refuse to come to the city council meetings then resign and we'll have a special election we'll have a true independent city elected city clerk and a true independent elected city treasurer we have, second, the Central Coast Water Authority. They have no reserves, they have no savings, and they generate no revenues. So currently, right now, they are one out of member out of eight. And this one member, as one member, the only thing that the Central Coast Water Authority has, member city of Santa Maria, the only thing collateral they have since they re generate no revenues is the city general fund and the ratepayers. So I, I, I make it very clear. I'd rather have the, cows, the, the, the county co be co-signed. I don't want no changes to that issue about bypassing the county. The state will give us all the water we want, oh, yellow lights on, will give us all the state water we want. But you are not, we, I refuse to have elected officials give and delegate that authority to seven other members to decide what's gonna be our financial risk, Ms. Patino. We're not giving no more money for rate increases, okay. period. Thank you, Mr. Armenta. Moving on to the consent calendar, Madam Clerk, could you please read item number three? Routine items are presented for city council approval without discussion as a single agenda item in order to expedite the meeting. The consent calendar is approved by roll call vote with one motion. These items are discussed only on the request of council members. Do, does anyone have items they wish to be pulled for discussion? Dr. Motes. I wish to pull and discuss for a brief period of time item K, fire. Mr. Cordero, anything for you? No. Okay. And that is assistance to firefighters grant. Go ahead. <coughs> I'd like to congratulate the fire department on its, uh, the acceptance of a grant from FEMA, I understand, for $1 million almost for the purchase of a new ladder truck, as our old truck was getting a bit outdated and in need of repairs. I think you did a wonderful job in preparing the grant for this, and you're to be highly congratulated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll second that. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, Madam Mayor, I would move for approval of the consent calendar. Second. It's been moved and second to approve the consent calendar. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilmember Boyson? Aye. Councilmember Waterfield? Aye. Councilmember Motes? Aye. Councilmember Cordero? Aye. Madam Mayor Patino? Aye. Next order of business is appointments. Madam Clerk, could you please read the title? The City Council will consider appointments to the Block Grants Advisory Committee. Okay, so appointments to the Block Grants Committee. Um, and that, that's all your report? I'll okay. give, yeah, I have okay. a little report. Pardon? I have a little report. Okay. Just a little one. <laughs> okay, so um, the first part, it's, I'm going to appoint uh, Rose Sagisi. And can I have a second on that? Second. So um, I'll make motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll? Uh, Madam Mayor Patino? Aye. Uh, Councilmember Waterfield? Aye. Councilmember Boyson? Aye. Councilmember Cordero? Aye. Councilmember Motes? Aye. Okay. okay. And Ms. Waterfield, you I, have an I opening? I do have a candidate, and uh, at this moment, it, it, it's not available right now. We, she's oh, okay. Um, had a delay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next order of business is regular business item. Madam Clerk, could you please read the title? The City Council will consider a conceptual review uh, of a proposed general plan amendment and zone change to allow for the construction of senior apartments at 1141 West Cox Lane near North Blosser Road. And staff report is to be made by Director of Community Development, Mr. Ng. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the Council. This is a conceptual review of a proposed general plan amendment and zone change to allow for the construction of 
Sewer Apartments located at 1141 West Cox Lane. This is the location of the northeast corner of Blosser and Cox. So this is a conceptual review, meaning this is um, not a project to vote on, but the applicant is here to look for guidance to make a decision on whether they should make a formal application to apply. Uh, this is a property that is currently zoned R1, single family, and the request is for R3 zoning to accommodate a proposed senior housing project. I'm going to turn the time over to the applicant and they can provide more details on the project. Thank you. Mr. Murrow? Good evening, my name is Lori Tamora with Urban Planning Concepts and I'm here with the applicant, Joe Hazel, and um, we are going to make a brief presentation on the project that we're proposing to submit to the City of Santa Maria. Uh, we'd like uh, some guidance and um, direction from the City Council to move forward. So I'll go through the materials as we have it presented. The site's located on the west side of town, um, off of Cox and Blosser. Uh, on the west side is the drainage ditch. And um, there are uh, three homes that abut the property. And uh, there's an existing house on the site. And I'll get a little bit closer. There you go. Um, again, we have three homes abutting the area. And then we have a house and uh, accessory structures on the property. The, um, built, the house was built in about 1955, and it added buildings um, came in as uh, the operation continued. Uh, basically, it's 1.3 acres. Um, we're proposing to rezone the site to R3 to allow for a single, or single unit um, senior housing on the property. And this is the concept plan. Uh, each one of these bungalows are back-to-back uh, -back 550 square foot units. And you can see here, they're one bedroom, a little kitchenette, living room, and a handicapped bathroom facility. Here's a concept of what it would view from Cox. Uh, there is an existing wall on the property right now. At this point, we're proposing to maintain that wall. Um, but we'll work with the city on additional landscaping around the property. And all of the units are one story. And um, this gives you just a concept of what it would be like inside the facility. This is a corner shot, again, one story with little porches on the, on the edge. Uh, this uh, exhibit illustrates where currently there are senior projects within the city of Santa Maria. And the red dot up there is the site that we're looking at. So this section of town is lacking of the ability for senior housing. And uh, this is an opportunity to provide a need um, that would address uh, the ability for seniors to be de developed there. So um, we hope that the city council would uh, encourage us to move forward. Again, no decisions made tonight. We'll move uh, through the process of submitting an application for the general plan change rezone, development plan, and related materials to the city staff. Um, we're here to answer any questions and look forward to your comments. Uh, any questions of Mr. Mayor? I, Mr. Boyce? What, what did you? I'm sorry. What did you say? Uh, it's a single family residence on there now, but is it also being used as? Com some sort of commercial no venture. no there's accessory buildings on this as far as i know there's no commercial there um you know it was a little horse ranchy area uh, there's some um side buildings where there was garage and machine shed type of stuff but it was all <coughs> contained within a ex sort of an extended family okay thank you i have, I have some questions oh, mr cordero uh, Lori, I, you know, this is always kind of exciting to have somebody come in with a plan for the senior housing, of course. But um, it, it seems to me that, that the senior kind of implies that maybe some of these people may not be driving. Um, and the nearest store that I can think of is down like the Walmart on South Blosser. Uh, the El Toro is a little closer, but that's kind of a specialized uh, food. Uh, uh, Products and then the next one is is is, is the uh, um, 
I guess it would be the uh, the one on North Broadway. Uh, Fire Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I, I'm I'm just a little bit concerned. Is there going to be any arrangement for transportation or something to get these people to their basic needs? Some of them don't need full time care. They just they can go out and do their shopping, but. That's all of those stores are too far for them to walk. I'm sure. And and we I thank you uh, to uh, City Councilor Cordero. Uh, what we're talking about here is um, a project that we understand what the needs are. These are independent living, but they don't normally drive, and so we have access to the um, smooth SMAP system, dial a ride, um, and we also have a manager on site that can coordinate uh, deliveries of food or whatever needs to come into the facility. The Hazel family has several senior facilities that they operate and are very accommodating to the senior needs and are familiar with how to address this kind of concern. Okay, that, that's pretty much my only concern is that the, uh, the, all of their needs are gonna be able to be met there and they're not just kind of out there in a little island all by themselves. No, uh, you know, the, there is also a community center in the center that will um, allow the ability for having meetings, uh, visits by um, the nursing staff if they need a visit. There's a lot of different uh, programs that are anticipated to be included in this project as it moves forward. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Ms. Waterfield. Uh, Ms. Tamura, I'm looking at the age of the residents, and at 62 years old, that's awfully young. That's just a year older than me. So I'm thinking that I'm still going to be driving at 62 years old. So are there going to be restrictions where you're going to have seniors that you're going to want to take that do not have vehicles? What about those that do have vehicles? And what is the parking uh, going to be like? In the, the city ordinance allows for th um, one parking space for every three units mm -hmm. in the affordable senior component. And so that's how we designed this project to provide the 10 parking spaces required as well as staff parking and visitor parking. So we have 15 spaces on the site. And uh, part of it is just property management to make sure that those that uh, need parking, is, it's available. The experience that the houses have had and the city has had with housing for seniors is most of them at this level don't have cars. And, and that's, that's why the ordinance is written the way it is. And that's who you're looking for as a customer of those that don't have the vehicle cars. What about a sound wall on Blosser? Is there going to be a specific type of wall for the noise, the cars going by? There is a black wall there now, mm -hmm. and the question is going to be, does it need to be mm -hmm. higher? Yeah. And um, the one thing about the design of the project, as you can see, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to stay with the site plan if I can get back there. We have the ends of all of the units facing towards Blosser, and uh, they're just very small windows on that side of each one of those units. Would that be their bedrooms that are facing yes. Blosser? Yes, yes. Okay. But they're small you know, windows along those sides, more for air and ventilation. And um, I think once you get into the project itself, those units will provide some buffer of the sound. Will you soundproof those uh, windows? Yeah, th they do need to meet all of the requirements for the decibel levels to be less than 45 within the units mm -hmm. and um, all of them also are going to have solar panels on them for electricity so if they need any air conditioning on that side that will be provided. Okay. All right, that's all I have. Dr. Motes. Ms. Tamura, I'm amazed that you can take one acre and put 30 units on <laughs> one story and I lived on an acre parcel with just one house on it it's amazing that you can do that seniors have to be 62 and over to live there what if a 65 year old uh, moves in and, and her daughter wants to move in with her are these questions that are even apropos at this stage now or I mean and are you going to limit it to two people per unit can you do that the answer is, um, is probably premature to ask these kind of questions until we get the final program set up. But um, 
that discussion came up. We had a neighborhood meeting uh, last week to talk about these things with the neighbors, and that question did come up. And uh, with the uh, one-bedroom design, you're either dealing with a senior occupancy or a single, single occupant or a couple in the unit. The management of the program lends it to that situation. Some of the questions that came up is what about full care? Or what if you need an aid? Or what if some member of the family wants to move in? That's a different housing situation. It's not appropriate for this product and this particular program. So they would encourage them to go to somewhere like Merrill Gardens or one of the other housing projects within the city of Santa Maria and not here. This is either one or two occupant units. And the next question is, this is going to be market rate, so I'm sure you've figured out what's cost effective and what the rent would need to be to cover the expenses. What would the rent be for a unit? Or I think um, that would be something Mr. Hassel might wait to come back with you on that answer. Okay. Uh, third question, there appears to be one egress ingress to this uh, uh, plan. Uh, as I recall on most of the ones we did at the Planning Commission when I was on it, there had to be two, like an escape route if something cordoned off the first entrance and a fire occurred or something. Is it okay just to have one entrance? That's, this is the first design that we have on the property to see what can fit on there. And we still need to go through the fire department and planning and all of the other agencies to make sure we meet all of their requirements. There will be fire sprinklers on here. We do have the ability for a second access if we need it, or even emergency access on DeJoy. But for the most part, we've looked at trying to accommodate everything within the site as it's shown now. And then we'll start working through the different departments to make sure we meet all the requirements. And who gets the parking spots? Those that have cars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Murray. Yes. Mr. Boyson? Well, I, I think you're hearing a, a common theme here as far as parking is concerned. I, I realize that we have a special regulations for senior housing and most of those are centered around the fact that we anticipate senior housing to be more or, or in closer proximity to services and that sort of thing where this is going to be a little bit isolated as, as Mr. Cordero pointed out. Um, I um, certainly uh, would feel more comfortable if there was more parking on the site. I, I, I really think 15 is not going to be enough. I, you've got the project manager that's on site. Um, uh, as Ms. Waterfield said, uh, you know, she's a year away from 62. <coughs> I'm several years on the other side of 62, and I don't plan on giving up my keys for a while. Um, so, I, you know, I, I, I really do believe that you're especially in independent living like this and especially in a situation where you do have an isolation um, I I really think that we should see at least 20 um, spaces in here um, I that's only five more than you're planning on I don't know whether that would be a, a full unit out of there or whether it can be redesigned um, so that I and the other problem that I had with the parking is you're, you're not going to want to have anybody parking on Cox over there? I, I'm pretty sure there's a no stopping zone along Cox. Actually, there there is on street parking on Cox. Oh, there is on yes, street parking. Yes, and so there you do have a, the opportunity for what we call bonus parking spaces for a project like this because it's on street parking, and there's probably six to eight spaces along the frontage of this property that would be available for parking. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I, although that is certainly a neighborhood impact, um, I assume that North DeJoy uh, is going to be isolated from impacts of the subdivision here, whether That's it be the a intent. block yes. wall or block something wall. along that line. I mean, if we have to have ingress and egress mm -hmm. o over there for emergency vehicles, that, that may be something that uh, uh, would be uh, obviously acceptable. But... Um, yeah, I, th I, I really think that we should uh, eliminate as much impact as possible. Cause everything surrounding that is R1 zoning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've been blessed in the city of Santa Maria 
with having very little neighborhood impact input as far as impacts and that sort of thing. Um, as you well know, uh, when uh, you know the county of Santa Barbara and, and any of the unincorporated areas down south, if a project like this was going in anywhere close to an R1 district, uh, we'd have this room filled to die. So it just for the conceptual review, but um, I, I really do believe just to make sure that we are the that this project is the best neighbor on the block that we need to ramp up the parking just a little bit on there. Yeah, Th those would be my only comments on that. But I love the project. I love 550 square foot units. My mother-in-law lived in one the last 20 years of her life and was just happy as a clam. It was a community, um, you know, um, she, um, uh, it, it was just a very, very pleasant surrounding. And the hostels obviously are the poster children of um, uh, providing services for seniors within our community. So I have no doubt that they will uh, run this efficiently and effectively. But uh, I just like to make sure that we eliminate any sort of neighborhood impacts. And I, I think the adding a few parking spaces would go a long way. And I think everyone's pretty much covered thing. I mean, the only thing I was concerned was, was per perhaps the parking, but everyone's covered everything. Question I would have so. Could, would it be appropriate for Mr. Hussell to come sure. up and say a comment? Okay, thank you very much for seeing us tonight. Um, so as far as the parking goes, we know that we know that it is uh, we know that it's tight or it sounds tight. Um, the the reason that we that we feel comfortable with 15 uh, is that this is um, this is going to be independent living for seniors, um, which when when we when we classify it as that, it's not just senior apartments, and we and we say it's independent living because there will be services available. Um, for folks that need them. And so the crowd that is going to be, um, well, I guess the target market uh, is not completely able to do everything on their own. And that they, w they would, um, like we've already talked with Dignity Health and visiting home um, and hospice care about being able to provide um, services that they already just go into individual homes and provide. Um, we. Okay, um, so that's that's one of the reasons that uh, that's one of the reasons we sort of settled with fifteen. I hear I hear it loud and clear that that still feels tight. Um, we did actually get to meet with the fire department um, at length a couple times about the uh, double exits, and we have a there's a fire hydrant on DeJoy and on Cox that um, those two fire hydrants can reach the furthest points. You know, all on their own, they can reach the furthest points. Um, and so they actually didn't require turnaround. They just required, um, they, they could just pull up to Cox or to Joy and protect the project. Um, so we have, we have gone over that with them. Um, and uh, let's see, thirdly, this is going to be a 100% affordable senior project. So the rents are going to be set at um, the, an affordable level and that the services, if, if services are offered, the services are voluntary. So it's not market rate. Um, this is uh, this is sort of the next. Um, it's kind of like the next generation of what the hostels are doing in senior housing. So. so there's going to be deed restrictions regarding the. I mean, this is like it is. Yeah, we've been working with an affordable housing consultant to ensure that the um, the, the funding that we need is in place and um, and that we are meeting all of the um, you know the requirements to uh, to offer these affordable units. So. Um, and uh, what do you anticipate? I mean, is this going to be an 80% area um, median? It's kind actually, of right now, um, because it's, it's, it's a 4% uh, tax credit project. Mm. It's being submitted as a 4% tax credit project. Um, it's going to be set at 60% of the median income. So the um, rents are at rather low, actually. Uh, if, if that is the case, yeah. I would take back everything I said about parking. Okay. I, you're, you're fine. Okay. Yeah. All no, right. if, 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 if you're going yeah, to this is like the next that generation length. of the hostels are trying yep. to get done in the community. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with it. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank All you, right. Mr. Hostel.
Madam Clerk, do we have any requests to speak or written communications? We have one request to speak. Sure, okay. Mr. Armenta. My Honorable Mayor, I just have a, one question, Ms. Patino. If uh, this is, I guess the, ma the, the next major intersection or street would be Donovan, right? West Donovan? Donovan and, exactly. yeah, pretty close, right? I, if I'm not mistaken, you, yourself, you, you don't live too far from this project, correct? Not yeah. too far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not opposed to it, but senior citizen next to single family homes, especially ones that like to celebrate. Yes, I. I Are you I, talking I, about the seniors celebrating? No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about. Watch those. Guys. Yeah, I, 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 I think that you know, um, I'm not opposed to it. Any property owner wanting to invest and make money. I believe this is the Cameron's property, right at the corner, the Cameron's property, right. and I just, I, I, I'm not opposed to it, but I know that just being next to a senior place, that you know you celebrate, then you're gonna the noise. It is, yeah, absolutely. I can see issues coming up, especially if you have folks that like to celebrate on special occasions. I could see it. But hey, if uh, the property owner wants to invest and wants to make a little bit of profit on their property, hey, I'm all for it. Thank you, Mr. Armenta. So I'll, I'll bring this item back to the council for discussion. Any further discussion? That's it? Okay. Mr. Ring, no. you've, you've heard what the council has to say. And um, I like it. Do, okay. Thank you, Mr. Halsell. Thank you, Mrs. Tamara. The next item is another regular business item. Madam Clerk, could you please read the title? The City Council will consider a financial report for the fourth quarter of 2016 17. Okay, and the staff report has been made by Director of Finance, Ms. Harvey. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Council Members, Staff Members, and the public. Tonight, I will briefly present the fourth quarter re financial report for the period ended June 30th, 2017. Although these numbers are not audited and balances will change as normal <coughs> year-end adjustments are recorded, the report does give a general picture of how the, re the city ended the fiscal year. I will primarily review the general fund, including Measure U, and enterprise funds. The beginning general fund balance of $10.1 million is the final audited balance as of July 1, 2016. Regarding revenues, four out of the five key revenue sources exceeded prior fiscal year receipts. Licenses, permits, and fees had the largest gain at $2.7 million, or 94% greater than the prior year. Construction permits associated with the Enos Ranch development and Winsett Farms projects are the primary reasons for this significant increase in revenue. Property tax revenue surpassed the prior year by 1.1 million. NHIS receipts totaled 1.6 million for 2016-17. However, excavation activities dropped significantly in October, have not rebounded, and are not expected to change much in the coming year. Staff projects NHIS revenues will fall to about 400,000 in 2017-18. Sales tax revenue is about 3% or 653,000 lower than the prior year and is the only key revenue source showing year over year decrease. However, the variance is a timing issue due to the end of the triple flip. You may recall that under the triple flip, one quarter of the city's sales tax revenues were retained by the state to guarantee their bond payments, and later in the year, the state reimbursed the city through property tax revenues that were meant for schools. The triple flip ended in December of 2015, and the final true-up payment of $2.6 million was recorded in June 2016. What this means is that this year's sales tax receipts are 100% of sales tax earned through June of this fiscal year, compared to about 103% of sales tax recorded in 2015-16. Had the triple flip not occurred, sales tax would have shown a quarter-to-quarter -quarter increase of 3.6% or 550000 General fund expenditures are at 95.6% of budget 
and include $2.5 million in salary savings from personnel vacancies in various departments. Based on preliminary revenue and expenditures, it appears that the $2.6 million transfer from the Local Economic Augmentation Fund, the LEAF Fund, may not be needed to maintain a general fund balance of $10.1 million. While this is good news, I would be remiss if I did not reiterate that LEAF reserves are intended to address severe shortfalls in revenue that are temporary in nature. And the current reserve LEAF balance of $6.3 million is not sufficient to mitigate the acceleration of ongoing pension and operating costs the city is facing. Turning to Measure U, revenues through the fourth quarter are 98.7% or $4.3 million. Expenditures are at 99.9% of budget or $4.4 million. Through June, roughly 90.8% of expenditures were public safety related with 39.6% spent on fire operations and 51.2% spent on police operations. As far as the enterprise funds, the water and wastewater fund revenues exceeded expenditures by 12.1 million. Revenues included state reimbursement fees of 2.6 million and 1.6 million in water sales to Montecito and Goleta. Expenditures included the semi-annual debt service payment of 4.6 million of principal and interest on the 2012 refunding bonds. For the solid waste fund, revenues exceeded expenditures by 1.1 million. And again, these are unaudited numbers, but it does provide an overview of how the city ended the fiscal year. That concludes my staff report and I'm available to answer any questions. Any questions of Ms. Harvey? No. no? Oh, Dr. Motes? <clears throat> Is it possible we're going to be getting more than on the N NHIS because of the tank farm project in San Luis Obispo? It, it is possible. Um, when I spoke with the utilities um, <coughs> deputy director, they had begun the project, but then they stopped and he was looking into why. So he was not comfortable in changing his estimate at that time. So it is possible and, and we are hopeful that that will happen, but um, it's a very volatile um, revenue source, and so we're very cautious on, on how we project that because it's very difficult to do. Madam Clerk, do we have any requests to speak or written communication? Or we have one request okay. to speak. Mr. Armenta? Stephen Armenta, City of Santa Maria. For all you folks at home and those present, um, I got to admit that I, I didn't understand what she said, but that wasn't because she wasn't clear. That wasn't because she wasn't able to communicate. That was on my part and our, a lot of our parts. I didn't understand a single word she said. And I don't consider myself uh, the brightest, but I'm not a stupid though. I, I, I didn't understand that. It, we don't have money for, for, fire de, for fire stations because the fire department came. We don't have money to fix the roof on the police department. We don't even have money to fix a playground. <coughs> and uh, I think, I think Ms., Mr. Hayden uh, and our assistant uh, city manager, I think someone, or at least our elected city treasurer, or even yourself, Ms. Spartino, are we in a financial crisis, yes or no? Are we, are, are we not able to make ends meet, or is something else happening here? Uh, my position is very simple. I'm, I'm requesting, Ms. Patino, if you could do this. That if the council can do this, if you could direct management to come to us and, and show us on simple, this clear language. If we dissolve the two-tier system and we shift the 60, those 60% 60 of those of our workforce that was hired before 2011, if we shift them onto the second tier, what would be the cost savings to the community, to the city? In numbers, not percentages, in numbers. I, 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 I'm looking for, some, for a, a council for men and women who are elected to aggressively deal with this pension and this debt problem. Give it to us. We're, we're, we can accept it. We're, we're grown-ups. Tell us. I, I, want, I, I think it's an unfair business practice. I want to see if, why we are not able 
this council was not able to build a fire station. You came to us, the taxpayers. As a matter of fact, you told the fire department you didn't have no money. We can't even, we're self-insured and our parks and recreation can't even have the money to build a playground. I know it's coming up, the, I, I, I know, I can see the writing on the wall. Sooner or later, you're gonna come to the taxpayers. Like right now, currently, I'll end by this, Ms. Patino. We have Jack Boyson who wants to do it in 2020, and we have Mr. Cadero that wants to do it immediately. You wish to hire and use taxpayers' money to hire a bond consultant, to you, for you can get a feel for how the people feel about higher sales tax. Do you really, I mean, do you need a bond consultant? All you gotta do is just listen to the people. It's off the beat, but I would just ask, I made my request, and I, it's nothing against Ms. Harvey, she's Cadero professional, I believe a Cal Poly graduate, alumni, something like that. It's just on me. I don't understand and we need to, I, I need my elected city treasurer to come and give us, you got it. Thank you, Mr. Armento. Okay, I'll bring this back to the council. Any further discussion at all? Okay, so at this time the council has received the report. It'll be filed with the chief deputy city clerk. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Next item, Item will be a report by our city manager, Mr. Hayden. Thank you, Mayor Bettino, members of the city council. Your next city council meeting will be not two weeks from this evening, three weeks from this evening. It will be on the 5th of September. I uh, want to remind everybody we do have a new start time. That start time will be at 5.30. It will not be at 6.30. And we have a fairly light uh, agenda that, that evening. Uh, we have a couple of uh, uh, proclamations. We have one noteworthy consent agenda item, and that is a, an agreement with Santa Barbara County on a cooperative library system. And then we will introduce the first reading uh, of revisions to our massage ordinance. <coughs> it's an ordinance that the uh, city has been working on for about a year, year and a half now. I think we finally have it at a position that we can bring that forward. It's setting new requirements for massage operators within the city of Santa Maria. Uh, if, if you wouldn't mind uh, in, indulging in, in another minute, and I normally don't respond back to uh, uh, filed reports, but uh, to address Mr. Armenta's question, since he's still here in the audience, uh, are we in a final financial crisis? The answer is yes. Uh, if you want to take a look at my budget presentation that I did back on June the 16th, uh, it would have indicated that in this current fiscal year, we're facing a $5.6 million uh, deficit. We're addressing that deficit using $2.6 million in one-time financing. The City Council requested that we keep positions vacant when they become open so we can have a salary savings of roughly $2 million, which means we need to keep dozens of positions open in the general fund for a lengthy period of time. We also reduced our operating expenses by about $400,000, and that still left us in the red by about $700,000, of which we're gonna be discussing that with, with our uh, employee bargaining groups when it comes up for concessions. Uh, as far as shifting our current employees, which he's correct, it's about 60% tier one employees to tier two or tier three, uh, the city of Santa Maria is engaging our uh, lobbyist up in Sacramento uh, to have those types of discussions with PERS is to, to uh, take a look at making the PEPRA requirements consistent with uh, current Tier 1 employees. Uh, for example, those employees that are public safety that might be at a 3% at 50, we're looking to see if there would be any type of legislation that would move them to what everyone else is in which would be 2.7 at, at 55 or 57, I think it is. Uh, we, we did build two fire stations uh, in, the, in the last five years uh, with Measure U funding. Uh, we were able to do that along with stimulus funding and we did staff those fire stations with, with nine new firefighters. And uh, as far as parks are concerned, uh, we take great pride in the fact that we did remodel Oakley Park, it's a beautiful park, northwest side of town. And then also we're in the process of remodeling Buena Vista Park. And the city council has authorized us to do a rehab of Armstrong Park for the uh, equipment that was vandalized. So uh, that concludes my report. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Hayden. The next item is oral reports of council members. And Mr. Boyson, we'll start with you. No reportable items. Ms. Waterfield. Go back to the last. Um, Thursday, October the 3rd, I attended the LAFCO meeting. And uh, I did not go to Santa Barbara. I did it via the satellite through the uh, county offices in uh, Santa Maria. Monday, August 7th, I attended the swearing-in for a new police officer who we attained from Lompoc, a very nice young gentleman. Um, on uh, Wednesday, August the 9th, I attended SB CAG regional meeting in Solvang. On August the 10th, um, I attended a wonderful birthday party. It was at Merrill Gardens, and it was for Priscilla Fellows, who turned 100 years old. And uh, it was just a, a wonderful, wonderful time over there. And there was another young lady there that was 102. And uh, I tell you, these people are just so energetic and a lot of fun to be around. Later that evening, I attended the Santa Maria Chamber of Commerce annual installation uh, dinner, which we uh, were able to honor a lot of good businesses, good people. On uh, Friday, August 11th, I uh, spoke at Habitat for Humanity. It was in connection with Mr. Tobe's group, and it was a trailer park that is directly behind, oh, South Blosser, uh, behind the Taco Bells and... Um, the Burger, the Burger King back there, not a Burger King, but a Santa Maria Burger, and uh, they did an amazing job. It was absolutely wonderful seeing those, uh, that group uh, just work super hard. And um, Monday, I attended the Mayor's Task Force on Youth Safety, and um, that was it. Thank you. Dr. Motes. That's a lot. <laughs> On August 10th, I also went to the Chamber of Commerce installation, and that's all I did. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Cordero. Thank you, Mayor. On uh, the 7th, I um, attended the officer swear-in at the Santa Maria Pol uh, Police Department, and, and today uh, we attended the, or yesterday, I'm sorry, we attended the, uh, the Mayor's uh, Task Force uh, gathering at Minami Center. I will share with you that um, it, it's starting to take form now and, and there, was a, there was some objection and I think that's probably normal. Uh, but it's starting to have its own legs and stand on its own and, 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 a, and we're starting to see what we might be able to do with this program. I, I really believe there's going to be some success with this. Um, and uh, although we may never be able to measure exactly what that success is, uh, we've got all the right players in the room together, and um, we're, 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 we're pushing forward with this, and I think it's a great idea that Mayor Patino came up with to, uh, uh, to do this. And we're going to have an impact on the youth violence here in Santa Maria. That's it for me, Mayor. Thank you. I, um, on August 7th, I attended the swearing-in ceremony for police officer David Culp. And on uh, and yesterday the 14th, the Mayor's Youth Task Force meeting from 1 to 5. And I want to say thank you to our people from the media because they sat there through the whole thing and then had to go home and relive it because they had to write about it. So that was, was that eight hours that you could put in there? Anyway, thank you very much. And Ms. Waterfield, thank you for filling in on me while I was gone. If there's no other business, ladies and gentlemen, um, I would like to adjourn this meeting, and as a reminder, we will be starting at our next meeting at 5.30, and that concludes tonight's meeting.